Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video in my Favourites Week series. Today, as part of my Favourites Week in celebration of reaching 20,000 subscribers, I'm going to be telling you about my 20 favourite modern classics. So before we get into the books, um, I will just say that where I have drawn the line between classic and modern classic at one end and modern classic and contemporary book at the other end is very arbitrary and a little bit weird and rather inconsistent. So the earliest published book in this list I think is from 1918 and then the latest published book for in this list is from the 90s and then there's one book which I'm going to put in my favourite contemporary novels which is actually published in the late 80s but as you will see tomorrow I have two books in that list by the same author that were published like 20 five years apart and it seems really weird to put one of those books by that author in the contemporary section and one of those books by that author in the modern classic section that I feel like that would be really weird so I just stuck it in with the contemporary ones even though if we're just going by year it belongs in this list but you know that's fine no one really cares about these details let's get into the actual books in short here is a list of 20 20th century classics that i love so at number 20 i have cassandra at the wedding by dorothy baker this is a book i read last year and really really enjoyed this tells a story of two twin sisters um who have grown up very very close um, and then recently have sort of fallen apart a little bit they haven't been living together anymore um and cassandra's sister suddenly announces that she's going to get married and Cassandra can't really stand the idea of her sister getting married because that means her sister will be a unit with someone else not a unit with her anymore and Cassandra already is kind of struggling with depression um, and loneliness um, and this kind of exacerbates everything and everything goes on from there and it's about Cassandra's relationship with her sister as well as their family as a whole it's an American novel from the 1960s and it really captures that moment in time in a wonderful way I highly highly recommend it at number 19 I have Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. This is a 1930s British novel and one that I really love. It tells the story of a woman called Miss Pettigrew who um, has lived a fairly drab and ordinary life and one day um, when she goes to the job centre she gets sent to the wrong job and rather than being assigned to look after a child she is sent instead to the house of a very glamorous young woman who for 24 hours um, takes Miss Pettigrew into her world um, and changes her and kind of brings her out into society. It is very very good fun, um, really kind of comforting and light and it's also set over just one day which is something that I always really really enjoy in books. This Pettigrew list for a day is just such good fun. It's a real comfort read and one that I highly recommend. At number 18 I have The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. Now this one does come with a caveat that I haven't read this for about nine years but when I read it when I studied it at university I loved it and I thought it was a really really fascinating novel. This is a novel from the 1960s and it follows a woman who has decided to separate her life into very various different notebooks so she sort of is writing a diary a very kind of mundane ordinary diary in one notebook one colored notebook and then in another notebook um, she is writing um, a novel and then in one notebook she's writing about her past and in the other notebook she's writing about her involvement in the communist party and the book is kind of all about like postmodernism and like fragmenting the self um, but it's also just a really interesting book about this particular woman um, her relationships the different facets of herself her life as a writer and about how the kind of different elements of herself conflict with each other. It's a really interesting and powerful read and definitely one I would recommend and one that I really want to reread at some point soon. At number 17 I have Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. This is a 1950s British novel and one that I really adore. So Excellent Women follows the life of a woman called Mildred who is considered to be a very very good woman um, but is considered sort of not that exciting by the people around her. She lives a fairly quiet existence until she encounters her new neighbours who are very glamorous and as she gets sort of semi-involved in their lives um, and kind of interested in their lives and watching what's going on in their relationship um, she kind of gets drawn into it as well and things go on from there. It's a really fantastic interesting read. Um, Barbara Pym writes wonderful characters um, and has a really great knack for kind of looking at social issues through her work. Barbara Pym is an excellent writer and I highly highly recommend this book. At number 16 I have The Haunting of Hill 
House by Shirley Jackson. This is an American novel from the 1950s and one that I really, really loved. Shirley Jackson is a wonderful writer. Um, I've only read two of her books, but both of them are in this list. The Haunting of Hill House follows a group of people who are all brought together um, in order to stay at this mysterious house um, that has lots of rumours of hauntings surrounding it. Um, and they all agree that they will stay in this house to kind of observe the hauntings. And obviously things start to go wrong um, and mysterious things happen and things go on from there. I really love how this book looks at its characters um, and how this very different group of people are all kind of brought together and explored. I also found this like immensely readable. There's something about Shirley Jackson's dialogue in The Haunting of Hill House that really reminded me of Agatha Christie um, in its kind of readability and its fun. I love The Haunting of Hill House so much and I think the ending is so clever and powerful um, and I like that it is a really kind of wonderfully atmospheric book but also has like its fun clever moments too. It's so fantastic and I highly highly recommend it. At number 15 I have The Makioka Sisters by Junichiro Tanazaki. This is a Japanese novel from the 1940s and this is a really wonderful read. The Makioka Sisters follows a group of very very different sisters um, and their kind of efforts to get married or to avoid marriage um, and how kind of the gender roles of the society they're living in um, are impacting their lives um, and their kind of romantic relationships and their friendships as well and their relationships with each other as sisters too. And the way this book looks at the position of these sisters is really cleverly done and really powerful. I really love Tanazaki a lot. I think he's a wonderful writer and this is my favourite book by him. It's one that I would highly, highly recommend. At number 14, I have Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. By no means the only Agatha Christie book to be appearing in this list. I'm a very big fan of Agatha Christie. I think she writes a wonderful, wonderful fiction. I love her writing so much. It is sparse and readable. I love her mysteries. I love her characters. And Murder on the Orient Express is definitely one of my favourite books of hers. This is one of her Hercule Poirot novels following the detective Hercule Poirot um, when he is on the Orient Express and a murder happens um, and he has to obviously work out who of the people on the Orient Express could have done the murder because of course it must be someone who is on the train. I really like the kind of claustrophobic atmosphere of the murder happening on the train. I think that is so clever and works so well and I love the solution to the murder on the Orient Express. It's one of Agatha Christie's best mysteries and I highly highly recommend it. At number 13 I have The Homemaker by Dorothy Canfield Fisher. This is an American novel from the 1920s, one that I highly highly recommend. This is such a wonderful novel in terms of looking at gender in early 20th century America. Um, and this book follows a family um, and the husband and wife have always kind of occupied very traditional gender roles. Um, the husband goes out to work every day and the wife stays home and looks after the children. And then one day the husband has an accident which means that he is left unable to walk. Um, and so he is unable to carry on with the job that he has been doing. So the wife goes out to work for the first time, um, gets a job, loves it, um, and the husband stays at home looking after the children, cooking, and also loves it. And suddenly the husband and wife have swapped gender roles and find themselves much, much happier and more fulfilled in the new lives that they're leading. It's a book about gender and marriage and family. It is clever and wonderfully written um, with great characterization and such a fascinating like premise um, and exploration of gender at its heart. So another book that I love and would highly recommend. At number 12, we have another Agatha Christie, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. This is another one of her Poirot mysteries. We're following a a doctor living in a small town and what happens when um, his neighbour Roger Ackroyd is murdered um, and um, another neighbour of his Hercule Poirot comes and sees if he can work out what's going on. It is a wonderful wonderful Agatha Christie um, with a fantastic mystery, a really great solution and one of the things I really like about um, Agatha Christie's books is when they're set in small towns because I feel like she explores small communities but small towns especially really really well so definitely one I would recommend and um, such a great read and yeah one of my favourite Agatha Christie's. At number 11 I have Random Acts of Senseless Violence by Jack Womack. This is a fantastic, fantastic science fiction classic. This was published first in 1993, so whether or not this really belongs in the modern classics um, video or in the contemporary books video tomorrow, who knows. This is a wonderful book that I read a couple of years ago, um, and it's one of those books that I loved at the time, but also that has really stayed with me. So it's set in sort of the near future from the time it was being written, um, and it's about a young girl called Lola Hart. I think she is um, sort of 11 or 12, maybe 13 by the end of the book. Um, and we're following her as she's writing her diary and she lives a very ordinary middle-class happy existence at the beginning of the book um, but 
Things are going on in her city that are complicated and messy. Random acts of violence are starting to happen. Um, people are unhappy. There is a lot of unrest. Um, and Lola's family fortunes are beginning to turn. Um, her parents are no longer making as much money. Soon she ends up in a less good school, living in a less good neighbourhood. And soon she gets involved in some of the complicated, messy, dramatic things that are going on in her world. The character development in this book and how Lola changes over the course of this not very long book is amazing. Like, it's a coming-of-age story in many ways, um, and the way that she changes, the way that her awareness of the world around her grows, the way that she kind of grows up over the course of this novel, the way that she begins to discover her sexuality and that she's attracted to other girls, um, the way that she begins to learn so much more about the world around her, um, and how her kind of naivety at the beginning of the book is just gone by the end. Like, this book is fantastic, and the characterization in it, and the character development is stellar. I would also say that, like, Although this book is called Random Acts of Senseless Violence, like there's nothing in it that feels like it doesn't belong there. That, there's nothing that's gratuitous, but like mostly it's just about this girl's journey and her growing up. Like it's such a fantastic, wonderful, character-led story and I highly, highly recommend it. What a wonderful book. At number 10, I have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is my favourite book by Daphne du Maurier, who is an author who I really enjoy. Rebecca is a wonderful, mysterious, atmospheric novel, which tells the story of a young, unnamed woman who, while travelling abroad, with the woman who she is employed to be a companion for, meets a mysterious and handsome older man called Maxim de Winter who falls in love with her and says that he wants to marry her and take her back to his grand house of Mandley. But when she gets to Mandley she finds out that um, his first wife Rebecca still kind of lingers everywhere. Everyone adored Rebecca. Um, all she ever hears about is Rebecca, how tragic her death was, how everyone wishes she was still alive um, and the new Mrs de Winter really feels that she doesn't quite fit in here and everything goes on from there. It is great. I feel like there's things about Rebecca which are um, kind of a bit of a retelling or a nod to Jane Eyre in a way that I really, really enjoy. There's so much about this book that I love, that I find intriguing and fascinating. The atmosphere and the complicated characterization, um, the constant sense of menace throughout this book, like it's so good. I just highly, highly recommend it. At number nine I have Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. This is a short novella that I read last year and really fell in love with. Breakfast at Tiffany's is a 1950s US classic um, and it follows a young man who is living in New York trying to make it as a writer when he ends up forming a friendship with a young woman Holly who lives in the flat beneath him um, and who is living this kind of messy lifestyle um, and they kind of become friends and it follows their friendship. I really loved Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, it's really interesting. I, I haven't seen the film of it but I saw the trailer for the film. The film seems like it interprets something very very different from what I was reading. Like I absolutely didn't read the narrator's relationship with Holly as romantic at all. Like I definitely read the narrator's character as gay and their relationship was entirely platonic and I really liked the friendship between them and the exploration of the weird world that they live in. So I loved Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's a really short read as well so I'm sure it's one I'll revisit in the future and definitely one that I would recommend. At number eight I have Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini which I actually only read earlier this year and I really really loved. This is a British novel that was originally published in 1918 that it was actually banned and several copies destroyed after it was published because it proved quite controversial partly because there are several characters in the book who are gay or bisexual but mostly because there are lots of characters in the book who are conscientious objectors and um, who are opposed to fighting in the first world war and this came out while the first world war was still happening and it's really a book kind of in praise of and in understanding of conscientious objectors. But as well as being a book about pacifism and conscientious objectors, it's also a book about the friendship and the relationship between two people, a man and a woman, both of whom you can read as being either gay or bisexual, and the relationship between them and the other people in their lives that they meet, um, as well as everything that's going on with the First World War and Dennis really not wanting to fight, um, is so fantastic and wonderfully done. I love this book so much, it made such an impact on me, and yeah, what a truly fantastic book. I highly, highly recommend it. At number seven, I have The Go-Between by L.P. Hartley. This is a book I read quite a few years ago, but one that I really, really loved. And this tells the story of a young boy um, who comes from a fairly middle-class background and for the summer goes to stay with his much fancier, wealthier friend. Um, and while staying with his friend, um, he ends up meeting his friend's elder sister. And this young woman has a secret. And she asks our narrator, this young boy, to um, deliver letters for her and kind of gets him involved in her secret and everything goes on from there. 
Um, and it's a book about kind of growing up and sort of that line between childhood and kind of young adulthood. Um, you know, how much does our narrator understand and not understand? It looks at class and growing up um, and memory and kind of naivety, I suppose, in many ways. It's a bit of a coming of age story and a really, really wonderful read. It's a British classic from the 1950s, but it's set a fair bit earlier than it was written. I think it's set in the late Victorian and kind of early Edwardian period. So it also looks kind of critically and from a bit of a distance at the sort of class um, and gender issues at that point in time. It's a really fantastic read and definitely one I would recommend. At number six we have Vile Bodies by Evelyn Waugh. This is a British classic from the 1930s and one that I love very much. I have a big love-hate relationship with Evelyn Waugh. His books are so hit and miss for me but I really really love Vile Bodies. It is a book about the kind of bright young things and um, this big society set in the interwar period who are sort of trying so hard to have fun that they're not really achieving it they're drinking too much they're partying too hard um, their relationships are all a mess and we're following um, two young people Adam and Nina who are sort of on the outskirts of this set um, and their complicated relationship it is bitter and spiky and funny um, it's written in this really kind of sparse spiky prose which I really really enjoy and it's just a fantastic entertaining bizarre read that I highly highly recommend at number five we have We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, um, my second Shirley Jackson book in this video. I really love Shirley Jackson and I love We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It is so good, it is so spooky and weird and so clever and twisty and turny, just fantastic. This book follows Mary Cat and her sister Constance and their uncle and they live in this big castle. There used to be a massive family who all lived here but many years ago everyone else in the family died um, and Constance, Mary Cat's elder sister, was blamed for the crime. She was accused of having poisoned everyone and she was acquitted but there is still this kind of big um, scandal that kind of lingers around their family um, and no one really wants to have anything to do with them. I love We Have Always Lived in the Castle so much. I think it is fantastically written, like the narrative voice in here is truly brilliant but also the relationships between the characters and um, the way we slowly learn more about this family is just truly fantastic like this book is so good in fact even just thinking about it like oh i just really want to reread it it has such a fantastic twisty turny plot with so many interesting characters and um, a really interesting look at kind of small town life and family relationships and growing up and i just yeah i love it a lot and number four we have the color purple by alice walker so this is a 1980s american novel and it follows our main character celie from her young childhood into her adulthood and the book is written in the form of letters. Initially they're Celie's kind of prayers to God and later they're Celie's letters to her sister Nettie. This is a book about what it means to be black and female in a early 20th century American society where both of those things put you at a huge disadvantage. But it's also a book about what it means to be a person finding their place in the world. Like what I love about The Colour Purple is that it's about Celie starting off from this incredibly difficult time in her life and then by the end of the book coming to like understand herself and um, her personality her sexuality her friendships and family and coming to like really demand happiness from life um, in a wonderful way the characterization of celia is fantastic but i haven't even mentioned the characterization of all the minor characters in here which is fantastic too it is just such a truly amazing book and i cannot recommend it enough so now onto my top three. My top three are pretty much all like joint first, to be honest. I love all of these very much um, and the order is quite arbitrary. So currently at number three we have And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is a standalone um, murder mystery by Agatha Christie, which tells the story of this group of people who are all, for various reasons, invited to this island in the middle of nowhere. But actually they've all been invited there because they were by accident or on purpose involved in the death of another human being. They've actually been invited to this island to face up for their crimes and one by one they slowly begin to be murdered. It is so spooky and atmospheric and so like tense and clever and I love it so much. It's such a fantastic premise and it is so well done. The characterization of all of these characters and there are a lot of them is just truly fantastic. Like there's just so much in this book that I absolutely absolutely love. I think it is a truly truly wonderful novel and I just I just love it. I love it so so much. 
Then at number two, I have A Dance to the Music of Time by Anthony Pohl. This is not an individual novel. This is, in fact, a 12 book series. But, you know, I'm going to count it as one book because, in a way, it sort of is one work of literature. A Dance to the Music of Time is a wonderfully epic work. Um, it was written from the 1950s to the 1970s and it spans from the 1920s to the 1970s. But the book is kind of not about Nick, which is one of the things I love about it. It's not about Nick, it's about everyone around him. It's about all of the people that he meets and his observations and interpretations of the people he meets. And he meets a lot of people. Like it's basically a giant character study of like a massive cast of characters, which I love so much. Um, but it also looks really interestingly at how society and culture and politics change over time in this really interesting point in 20th century Britain. It is such a wonderful series with wonderful characterization, great humour and a really interesting premise and I just love it so so much. But at number one, what is today my favourite modern classic, um, though tomorrow maybe I'll say I love the dance and music of time more, um, from a very very long work to a very very short work um, I have here Passing by Nella Larson. This is a novel from the 1920s, um, one of the important novels in the Harlem Renaissance movement um, and this is a book which is just just truly fantastic like how can such a short book pack such a punch I do not know this book is about the relationship between two women Irene and Claire Irene and Claire knew each other when they were young girls but their lives have gone in very different directions both of them are pale-skinned African-American women Irene has continued to live in the African-American community but Claire has spent her life passing as white she is married to an incredibly racist white man who doesn't realize that she isn't white um, and the book basically begins when Irene and Claire meet again and it's about their friendship, their relationship, what it means to pass, what it means to be a black woman living in 1920s New York. It has such a fascinating exploration of so many like social issues as well as having wonderful wonderful characterization and really like psychologically real characters but I can't even explain what I love about this book so much without spoiling the ending which I don't want to do because the ending of this book Oh my goodness, it is good. It is so good. Like, like I said, it's such a short book, but it packs such a punch and the ending is just magnificent. I highly, highly recommend this book. It is truly fantastic. One of my favourite books of all time now. I just love it so, so much. It is a truly, truly wonderful read and I cannot recommend it enough. So there we go. Those are 20 modern classics that I love. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that it hasn't been going on for too long. Please do let me know down in the comments what your favourite modern classics are. And I'll be back tomorrow with another bookish video.